Hey y'all, my name is Tyson and this time let's do some inference locking uh, practice examples. I love inference locking. I think it's always worth uh, practicing and making sure that you can just sort of use all kinds of different locking techniques. So this is set up to practice a few different ways, both with drawing and the move tool that uh, you can use inference locking. Now, this is not hard to recreate or recreate something like it, but if you wanna follow along, jump over to the warehouse and I put this file under skill builder INF lock. So uh, you can download this file, follow along if you like. This file also has, um, if we zoom out here, this roof example, and we'll do this in the next skill builder. So this time we're just going to focus here. Let's jump into it. And let's start here. What we're going to draw is this shape uh, with the line tool using these um, blocks for our reference. So I'm going to delete this shape. And I, if you're not at all familiar with inference locking, this is not going to be a super basic introduction. We're going to kind of move fast. But the idea, of course, is that you can lock a direction. So as I'm drawing, I can tap the right arrow key to lock the red direction, the left arrow key to lock the green direction, and the up arrow key to lock the blue direction. You can also find a direction and hold the shift key to lock that. And we're going to practice both. Uh, you can also lock to our diagonal direction, which is what we're going to be doing as well. So let's start here. I'm going to start drawing a line. And I'm going to start moving in the green direction. So let's say I tap the left arrow key. Now I'm locked in the green direction. Now from here, I can lock and reference some of these points. But what I want to reference is this edge. See the difference between the point and the edge? I want to reference the edge because in each of these cases, I want uh, this shape to merge into these rectangles. So I click here, and now I'm free to move around again. Well, I can just click here, here. Now, if I hover, or it already found it, we get that purple line. But I need to lock that to know how far to draw so I'm drawing here and I can tap the down arrow key and the down arrow key will lock a, um, a non-axis uh, edge. So as I do that, then I'm going to hover down here. Now I don't want the point, I want the edge. So I click here and now I'm going to start drawing back in the green direction. This time, instead of using the arrow keys, I'm going to start using the shift key because I find in some cases it, it can be just faster. So hold the shift, hover over this edge. I'm not clicking. Hover, click, then click, click, hover, and hold the shift key. Right? So I'm not worrying about uh, finding this edge. I'm hovering on it. Hold the shift key, and that locks me to it. And then move down here, click, move down. I'll come back to this one in a moment. Lock the green, find the edge, click, 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 hover, hold the shift key, and I'm locked. I can just reference this edge, find the green, locked in the, with the shift key, hover, click, click, click hover and this is what I, I tend to call this pre-locking, right? I could hover on this edge, hold the shift key and I'm locked to that edge. If I let go and hover on this edge, hold the shift key, I'm locked to that one. So I'm just hovering, holding the shift key, locking, click, click. I love the inference locking engine in SketchUp. Absolutely love it. Now this one I just wanted, this one is um, 
perpendicular and I just wanted to show that the rectangle tool, if I click here and hover here for a moment, it is also another way to get an inference. Now I do want to be careful, actually this edge, if I drew this the other way, here, here, and then draw over, I found that the midpoint's really close. See how close that is and, and how it's kind of messing with my rectangle there. So just as something to be aware of if you're uh, always, always be aware that there are multiple inferences in SketchUp and, and sometimes some of them tend to get in the way when you don't want them. All right, so that's that idea. Again, just to emphasize again, I can pre-lock, uh, which I like to do with the shift key. I'm hovering over, for example, this edge, hold the shift key. I haven't even started drawing, but I can hover over this edge, click, and now that point, click, hover, lock, click, hover, lock, click. So that's the idea is that you can do some really great inferencing by drawing and holding the shift key or the arrow keys, or in some cases, pressing the shift key and arrow keys before you're drawing. Now, this is a similar exercise. The difference is that I want to line all of these faces up with this surface. So we're gonna do the similar thing, but we're gonna be using the move tool. So for example, I'll start here. And I, I do wanna note, see how this is how your blocks, if they were groups, they tend to be like this, right? Because you tend to draw a block, group it, and then rotate it. But the axis is drawn correctly. I purposefully, if you look at these bounding boxes, I purposefully messed up the axis on some of these to force so that you can't use the axis direction. So you have to use uh, this pre-locking, but this one still is. So here's the idea. I grab this edge, invoke the move tool, and then I can start moving from that endpoint. And in this case, I'll just tap the left arrow key, the green, and again, I wanna be careful not to this point or this edge, I wanna hover and lock to this surface. And then do the same thing here. Select this edge, use the move tool, grab that endpoint, and I'll just simply tap the left arrow key to lock because this one is on the green axis. Click and get outside that group and that's it's lined up. And that's what we're gonna do to all of these. This time, because we don't have the luxury of the left axis, because if we were to do the left axis, right, that warps our geometry. This time I select the edge, use the move tool, hover on this edge and hold the shift key. So I'm locked to that edge. I haven't clicked to move anything yet, so I'll click to move this edge, I'm still holding the shift key and click here. Now I can let go of the shift key and I don't even have to orbit. I know this edge is through here. If I look at X-ray, I can kind of imagine where this edge is. So I'm drawing a left to right window, selecting it, use the move tool, hover, hold shift, click on my endpoint and now I'm moving that edge, referencing the surface, clicking to finish, and then letting go of the shift key. If you haven't done this before, it's definitely a sequence that you're gonna need to practice, right? So select, move, hold the shift, pick the correct point, hover, click, and let go of shift. You just need to hold shift to hold that lock the entire time. But this is this is just good practice for doing that sequence. And finally, got this last one. If you so 
Uh, if you're comfortable with it, by all means, turn on the x-ray mode so that you can see through. I could hover through this now and grab this point. But here I do need to be a little bit careful that, uh, you know, what I'm clicking on because x-ray is on. But this is what we were trying to achieve. That we were lining all of these up with this surface using inference locking. Now this example is uh, also very similar. We're just gonna kind of reverse engineer that in a couple ways. So in this case, let's say we use the line tool and I'm gonna hover on this edge, hold the shift key and I'm locked to that edge. Now, if I ho uh, hover on this surface and click, I know I've started my edge correctly. Now, because this is parallel, I could do something like hover here and find a parallel to that. And again, there's going to be multiple ways to do this. So I lock that direction, click, and then maybe I'll just be lazy on this one and push pull this away. But we can do the whole thing, let's say over here. Here, this time, let's turn x-ray mode on. And I'm gonna hover, see how I'm on that face, hold the shift key. Now I only can draw on, uh, you know, in um, the direction that will be on that plane. So as I click here, here, and I'm gonna keep holding shift and work my way through all these edges, now I'll finally let go of shift but by locking to that surface, I could work my way around. One more example of that that let's, uh, let's have a look at. Let's say I hold the shift key on this surface. So now, no matter where I draw, I'm just gonna draw some random shapes out here that I know are gonna be big enough. But you see how, yep, I'm locked to that surface. And in this case, just to make things simple, let me ungroup these and select all of these, select this, intersect with model, and then a little bit of cleanup will get us. And if we have some reverse faces, which we do, it looks like we might even have a uh, an extra face or two here. Oh yeah, we, we, <laughs> do you see what's happened? Uh, because I intersected that face, it also intersected here, which created that extra, those extra edges. In this case, I'm just going to take these three faces, reverse them, and then delete that geometry. And that's that. Okay, so like I say, uh, in the next video, we'll go ahead and tackle this roof using not all of these, but a few inference locking techniques. But go ahead and, you know, try this out on your own. I hope that, um, I hope that was clear. Inference locking, like I say, is a sequence. Um, you've got to know when to tap the arrow key or when to hold the shift key and to keep holding it down. And it just takes practice if you haven't done it a lot. If you're kind of old school, you're really used to using the shift key. And then once we introduce the arrow keys, that will cover most cases. But uh, it, it is useful to know both. And sometimes it's a little bit faster to use one or the other. Uh, so I find it's just, it's useful to practice both. Hopefully you, you got this. If not, let us know, um, if there, if, if this was confusing or if this hopefully made sense. I know it's an abstract example. Like I say in the next one, we'll, we'll do a roof a little more, something a little more tangible. Uh, but download that file if you want to, to do this on your own. And thanks for following along. See you next time.